Follow along in Adobe Illustrator as we create a uniquely styled letter form to help you learn some essential techniques. You can download working files via a link in the description if you want to get started as quickly as possible. For inspiration, I want to look at this narrowboat lettering that you see on canal boats all around the UK. And this is particular hand painted style. That's just going to be some kind of reference. But let's jump straight into Adobe Illustrator. File new. Let's make it web. Just something for the screen. And we'll use pixels just so we can all use the same units. So here we are. We want to make sure our workspace looks the same. So let's go to Window, Workspace, Essentials Classic, and then hit Reset Essentials Classic. That just means that your screen will look most similar to mine. And just check we've got the same grid. So if you hit Command apostrophe you can see the grid then settings guides and grid and set your grid line to every 100 pixels with subdivisions every two so that means every 50 pixels we have a line and that will just help us as we're working to keep everything lined up so if you click T for the type tool then click on the artboard and then type the character uppercase Y then I'm gonna make this a little bit larger by dragging out that handle so I can see it I'm just going to type in slab because I want a slab. Now this font is available on Google Fonts, Montagu Slab. So if you do the bold, then Shift Command O to make outlines. And we can see we have outlined this type so we now have a shape to work with. And I'm just pushing this around. So first of all, we want to make this a unified shape So because we've, we've got some overlapping shapes here. So we're going to go to Window Pathfinder and then click Unite. And now this is one solid shape which you can see there in outline mode and we can just check that zoom in command A to select all have a look at the points that looks okay to me alright now I'm gonna make this 300 pixels wide I think just to make sure that it aligns on our grid where we've got grid lines every 50 pixels so the bottom and left there now if you hold alt and option and then click and drag you will make a copy over there as I've just done and then I'm just going to change the fill of this one by double clicking on that fill there to a uh, color so it's easier to work with so we'll just find a blue here uh, drag around in the color picker and uh, something like that is kind of a purpley blue okay then with the object selected we're going to create a copy of this that's going to act as the shadow so if you press shift command M you bring up this move tab and I want to move this down and to the left so I'm going to do minus 25 and 25 then make sure you hit copy and then you have your copy and I'm going to send that to the back with shift command and left square bracket and then just make it a little bit darker just bring the brightness down just so I can tell that this is the shadow versus the foreground okay so we've already got that shadow effect very quickly uh, being established here. I think let's make another copy of this. Vectors are free, so it's always good to duplicate these copies uh, throughout Illustrator so you can go back at any stage and you're, you're editing you know, non-destructively where possible and uh, you, you don't get uh, lost <laughs> part way through. So what I want to do now is... Uh, enhance this shadow by creating these other sections so select the pen tool with P and then if you just click across uh, at each point up oh, so I've gone wrong there I'll just click escape I don't want to go from that point I want to go across at the angle there and we're going to draw each one of these shapes individually now I want to color this something different just random just so I know that it's a different color something like this pink it's actually not a bad color scheme now I'm just aligning here to these guides so it's very easy I just have to click once with the pen tool for these straight lines you can already see the sort of effect that we're creating and this relies on uh, smart guides so make sure you have those turned on Okay, just continue to click and drag. I'm going to make this actually a separate shape to the one that's above because that will just help me to uh, make sure I've got a good uh, good options, as many options as possible. If you can't see where it is, just drag until you find the, the line, the outside line of the shape underneath and then it will appear so you know about where you've got to go. Let me show you the smart guides. View, smart guides, command U. That needs to be turned on for this to work okay we send that to the back shift command left bracket again and back to the pen tool 
click on those points just using the smart guides close that up send it to the back okay so we've kind of got a, a start here so what I want to do is I'm just going to color those in the same color as that so we can see the general effect I'm going to have that as one shape the dark blue or the, the down sections the sections that are below in one color and then the sections on the left in another but I'm just going to undo that bring them back to the other color just so I can edit them so let's make a copy again of the whole thing click and drag to select it all then option alt uh, click and drag and then release your mouse button before you release that option or alt key so make sure you've got a copy so I'm selecting these down sections now apart from the bottom one and I'm unifying those uh, together into one path now I want to think about creating some gradients that I'm going to be applied to these sections so I'm going to just drag out a rectangle here in the grid uh, before I make my gradients so you can see my uh, fill and stroke colors there and I'm just going to hit G for the gradient tool and then if you double click on it or drag you'll get that gradient applied here now we want to change these colors by default this is black and white so if I double click on the little black dot there um, I have the option clicking on the eyedropper to select tool uh, some colors from here whoops see I'd selected the whole thing there I need to click on it double click on that eyedropper tool again and then we see we've got a gradient there to work with I'm just going to change these because I don't want it to be the same color as the foreground so I'm going to bring the brightness up no down sorry to 40 and then we'll check the brightness here let's make that at 20 so it's darker on that side okay so that's our first gradient let's click and drag that out a copy and we're going to edit this gradient whoops I need to go to the gradient tool there G double click on it I'm going to switch these around so it starts from that what was that lighter one no I'm actually going to bring that up a bit so it's slightly different when they're next to each other to 50 so this one let's say 70 We'll see how they work. So I think they'll be a good two to work with initially. We'll see what they look like. And I'm gonna just make sure my foreground is definitely lighter than that 70 up to 90 there. Then go to window, swatches. Now I like to, when I create a new document, to actually clear out the swatches that are in here. So let's go to small list view so we can see more. So if you click on one and then hold shift and click again, it will select them all and then we'll click on the little delete bin at the bottom and now I'm going to add these swatches in just by selecting them and clicking on the plus at the bottom for each one and give them a name oh, grad 2 and then I'm going to select each of these side panels and apply the gradient to it okay and then on this back one I'm going to apply and the bottom one I'm going to apply the darker gradient but that's going from right to left now so I want to change that so I'm going to click on this in my properties panel gradient and then the three dots I'm just going to type in the angle change that to 90 degrees so I want that one going down away and the same with this one, play that gradient, then edit gradient, then the three dots, then turns that to 90 degrees. And now that is applying down. It's not very visible that one, so we might need to just finesse that somewhat. But you can see the general effect of, of what is being produced here and what we're, we're trying to do. We're making progress, but these colors need some uh, finessing here. We need to sort out these gradients and get them uh, looking a little bit more exciting and getting them work together a little bit better so I'm gonna select this gradient here uh, no let's start at the bottom and we'll edit this ok 
get it going back to 90 degrees. I think we'll make this color a little bit brighter. So we'll bring that up to 50% brightness. That's a little bit more obvious as a gradient. And then with this one, I think it's the position really of the gradient. So we'll sample this other gradient here as a starting point. Remember, come back to it when we've done the side one. So clicking on the side gradient, I'm going to double click on that circle, change the brightness to 30, say, somewhere around there. 35 yeah and I'm getting a bit more of a pronounced effect that I want there so let's make this a new gradient swatch let's make it gradient 3 so it's easy to work with um, and then let's make this one gradient 4 so we've got new versions of our lighter and darker swatches here 3 and 4 make sure number 3 is applied on the side there We'll just zoom in and kind of see what it looks like if we're producing more of the the kind of look that we want let's make a copy of that okay i'm going to copy this y on the front and then paste with command f to paste in front i'm going to change the foreground color to white and then shift x to flip that to the stroke color and the stroke i'm going to make sure it's aligned on the center and change the size up to two point just so we can create that look where the foreground letter is sort of separated from the shadow that we've got there so we're getting closer with this now i'm going to apply a gradient to this as well and then click and drag when you've got the gradient tool selected to apply that gradient how you want to across the shape so you can do it at any angle you can do it so it starts you know within the shape starts outside of the shape and i just want it to be subtly darker on that top right so I'm just finessing that slightly as we go and I think that's pretty close and maybe look at this shadow in the background I think that's maybe one that needs to move if, if we just move the color up and I'm just looking to see so I can get that gradient effect moving down so it, it looks a little bit more 3d that's but working better now I think that's pretty good I think we'll move all these out the way, our workings up there. I'm just trying to make sure they're still aligned with something. Alt, click, drag, make a copy. I'm going to select this thing and I'm going to try some other color combinations. Here. So if we go to object, expand, first of all, we've got to get this stroke uh, expanded in case we decide to scale it. So now you can see it's white in the foreground, not the background. So we won't have any problems with the stroke being the wrong relative size. Edit recolor artwork. Let's just drag this out the way and hide that little panel there. And you can just drag around the color wheel and try out different options further away from the center, more saturated, closer to the center, desaturated. And I'm kind of liking this yellowy gold type color. I think there's something you know quite interesting about that. I like I wanted to go for this gold effect. I like how the the gradients look quite metallic. Let's throw it into a mock-up. So we'll go over to Photoshop. I've got one prepared here and we'll link to this in the description. Double click on the your image here which is where you can edit the smart object we'll put a solid color in the background this isn't a photoshop tutorial it's an illustrator one so i'll just quickly do this for the sake of uh, uh, demonstrating but you'll be able to uh, do this uh, by yourself i'm sure just using the mock-up uh, that's linked to there we go we've got our letter form onto the coffee cup I think it could do with a little bit of finessing it's maybe a little bit large just maybe look at that color now looks quite browny and dark so see what we can do with that to maybe just uh, finesse this slightly we'll make it a little bit smaller we'll start with that we'll scale it down it's about 250 let's just type in 250 percent 
it's a vector so that's fine that looks a bit better there a little bit smaller a bit more proportional let's mess with the mock-up itself that might be why it's looking dark these shadows we take that on 70 percent let's click and drag a another in illustrator and just edit the colors again see if we can get a bit more of a yellowy a bit more of a brighter thing going on so it's not too brown uh, when we go into the coffee cup so i'll just kind of have some play with that and this is where i've got to we'll just cut over to photoshop and there we go and I think for something that we've pulled together in, what, 15 minutes? That's quite a handsome looking cup. Have a go at your own versions and try and incorporate these techniques into your work. That will help your learning to stick. If you're looking for an overview of Adobe Illustrator, then check out my crash course video. And if you haven't mastered drawing perfect curves, my pencil lesson will help you with that. Until next time, friends, happy designing.